Good morning, everybody. Welcome in. We are live inside the Magnolia Lobby at the Gaylord Opryland Resort and Convention Center. And if you're joining us right now on the Circle app or Peacock or Roku or Zumo or Fubo or Tubi or Sling TV or Redbox, <laughs> welcome in. Well Did done. I get them all? Well done. You've had two cups of coffee. I've had two and you I'm need, working on three. You need two to go through that. So. We're working on three. <laughs> Hey, you know what? It's a great morning. We're glad that you guys are with us this morning. Hang on because we've got Erin Enderlin coming up later on in the show. Always love talking to her. She actually wrote the new Trisha Yearwood song that just got released. That's one to add to the catalog, I huh? Mean, I yeah, know. that's pretty yeah. exciting. Yeah. So we'll be talking yeah. to Erin coming up in a little bit. Plus, we've got entertainment headlines. My goodness, there's a lot of people making headlines for us this morning, one of which is Ryan Gosling. You're welcome. Especially if you're watching, you're double welcome. So get ready because he and Chris Stapleton are both going to be on Saturday Night Live this coming Saturday. Okay, we're all going to think of who we have fangirled or fanboyed for because I, I, oh. I feel him on this one because I've been that way. So Yeah, okay. okay so so we're just, going down that just, road. Oh, I think we have to, don't you think? We don't have to, but we will. <laughs> this is Coffee Country and Cody. Got a big old show happening tonight at the Grand Ole Opry. So we're excited that she decided to get up early and come in and see us first. Erin Enderlin, how are you? I'm so good. How are you? I'm doing great. You've got to be on uh, Opera Country Classics tonight. I am. Have you done classics before? I have. Okay. A couple of times. Okay. It's always fun because you get to do some of your favorite songs that you probably want to play that aren't your own. Yeah. But it yeah. is really fun. I find that it's maybe more nerve-wracking. Really? Because, uh, you know, you're playing your hero's songs. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. But also really fun. <laughs> <laughs> How do you narrow down what you want to do? Do you have, like, a whole list of, like, these are my favorites to perform? And um, Well, I usually try to do covers that I will play in shows sometimes because okay. I'm a little more yeah. comfortable with them. But, uh, you know, it's really hard. I guess I say that, and then if you ask my husband, he would be like, "Oh my god, she spends hours like yeah. <laughs> she's over there, like analyzing going through, oh. everything." <laughs> awesome. Well, congratulations on the new cut, by the way. Thank this you. This is so exciting. So, give us all the details on writing this song that now is Trisha Yearwood's new song that she just yes. put out. Um, so about a year, year and a half ago, my buddy Sonny Sweeney, who oh. we all love, getting sweenered. Mm-hmm. Uh, she called me and was like, hey, do you want to come write with me in Trisha Yearwood? And I was like, um, duh. <laughs> <laughs> so we went over and uh, we wrote a song in the basement that day. We did some basement writing. And um, we hit it off and just have been writing over the past year, year and a half. And it's been really cool. Trisha is working on a whole album of songs that she's co-written and really getting into that and she has a really cool story behind kind of the journey of that yeah and this song in particular got together with uh jim moose brown and trisha and she had this idea put it in a song um you know like whatever you're feeling you know that's where it all starts for writers you have this Mm -hmm. need to tell your story um, or tell a story that some and sometimes it's your story, but it's disguised, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is my favorite part. You know, you never know. Well, and I we did an interview with her um, back in the fall, and she had alluded to the fact mm-hmm. that she was really digging into songwriting, and that that was something that she didn't have a chance to do a lot of before that she really is loving right now yeah so i can imagine like all of the things that she's had in her head for years all of a sudden she's got this new outlet it's just Mm -hmm. like a floodgate for her got a whole well yes and she's just really incredible my favorite part is we'll have written a song and she'll text and be like well i don't know about this line what do y'all think and then i'm sitting here trying to think of the most you know poetic like just scratching it out working real hard and she'll just text it back and be like what do you think about this and it's like something like uh you know if your heart gets in the way and it's like um um, yes (laughs) why are you asking me you already have the perfect line (laughs) but it is something to be said that she trusts you with that Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. that's a it's a scary thing to be that vulnerable especially to be trisha yearwood to be vulnerable with somebody in a space and say you know here's what i'm thinking what do you think? Like she really does yeah. want that that sounding board. 
Well, I mean, I'm a total Trisha nerd, so <laughs> her songwriting's safe with me. That's ha- amazing. Had you met her before that first co-write? I had met her a little bit. Actually, um, the first cut I ever had, Trisha cut, but it didn't end up coming out. We gotcha. all know the story of Nashville. Uh-huh. So oh. I kind of got a full circle moment now. Did she remember that? Um, no, but I make sure and tease her about it all <laughs> the time. What was the song? It's called Except When I Fall Out of Love. Really? Okay, so t- walk us through that whole thing. <laughs> For people that don't understand, you come to town to be a songwriter, you work and work and work, and then you finally, and there are things, that, oh, we got this song on hold, and you don't know if it's actually going to happen, and then you finally get the word that someone is going to cut your song right. and it's like it's all happening for me but then it didn't so i mean honestly it was incredible i was like 20 years old it was a song i wrote by myself and so the fact that trisha even listened to it was pretty exciting oh that's good um yeah and i i mean i always take it as those kind of things you're just getting closer to the goal so that's right but i was like over the moon you know telling all my friends at mtsu <laughs> well, yeah and you don't have to follow up with the fact that it didn't come out in the album I mean, that's, that's right, right. No. she, she, she recorded it she right. that's recorded a fair it. yeah well i mean so alan jackson hall of famer randy travis hall of famer reba mcintyre hall of famer <laughs> trisha yearwood very soon at some point to be Hall of yes, Famer. Yes. I mean, these are these are pretty good songwriting credits. And then throw in Leanne Womack and Terry Clark as well, just for the fun <laughs> of it. But I mean, that, it's a who's who in country Thank music you. who have recorded your songs. And as of this year, I get to add Willie Nelson. Oh! Tell us! Hall of Famer. <laughs> oh my gosh. May 31st, his new album, Borderland. Uh-huh. Uh and I probably said that wrong. I'm sorry. I haven't it's okay. had enough Cody coffee yet. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. We'll get you some in the back. Yeah. But yes, I think it's a border something That's like right. that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So sorry, Rodney. <laughs> tell us, tell us all about. Yeah, because it was Rodney's song first. <laughs> tell us all about what's going to be happening there. What's the song? It's called "I Wrote This Song for You," and I wrote it with our buddy Larry Cordell, mm-hmm. who I just love so much. I love this. Yeah, yeah we wrote it 17 years ago, actually. Um, so it's one of those that's been just bouncing around looking for its home. And uh, I was cooking dinner a couple months ago, and Larry called and. He's so funny. He's like, well, I, I don't want to interrupt you. I just uh, wanted to let you know that we got a Willie Nelson cut. And I'm like, uh, what? Well, how did we do well, that? Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Go back to making oh. spaghetti. I didn't want to oh, interrupt. Yeah. Are you Don't want to bother you. <laughs> but I thought you'd like to know. But. <laughs> is that the oldest song that you've had like, cut it is. with that yeah, time frame? Because so. that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 17 wild. years. Yeah. So how did it find its way to Willie? Well, it's a really funny story, actually. Um, you may know that Larry Cordell and Larry Shell write together a mm-hmm. lot. Okay. Well, Larry Shell, I guess, had some kind of last meeting with Buddy Cannon and uh, messaged Larry Cordell and was like, hey, could you send me some demos of ours that I could go pitch? And Larry had our song in the wrong folder on his computer and just drug it over there with it. <sighs> So Larry Shell pitched, <laughs> pitched my song. So thanks, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's oh really funny. Oh my gosh! You know what? <sighs> the song finds a way. It does. Yeah. It's kind of weird when you think about how many times weird little quirks or coincidences or you know mishaps mm-hmm. have happened, but it actually ended up being the way that the song found its way yeah. to where it was supposed I to mean, land. It feels like every every song has some crazy story. Those are the really? best. Oh, <laughs> those are absolutely the best. So I owe Larry Shell at steak dinner, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the border. It's coming out May 31st, and it's right before he turns 91. Right yeah. before Willie turns 91. Oof, Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Still well, going strong. You know, so the Trisha cut, but, you know, she's in love with the boy. That probably sat for well over a decade True, from John yeah. Imes before it eventually found its way to Tricia. So sometimes it just, it finds its home eventually, right? Yeah. And, I, you know, that's just another thing for, I know there's a bunch of songwriters out there listening to this that's show. True. If you know in your heart you've got a great song, you just keep playing it for everybody. Mm-hmm. Don't that's give right. up on a great song. That's exactly right. Well, and you know what? I think you need to repitch the first song to Tricia. You need to rework yeah. it a oh, little bit. Oh, don't worry, I have. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's not listening. Yeah. <laughs> so, like the song finds a way, Trisha. What was it like to see her sing it on the CMT Awards? I mean, that's oh so gosh. cool. Oh. Yeah. It was incredible. Well, yeah. and I was sitting there on stage that, trying to play guitar. Yeah, yeah. Too, so. so I mean, it's, um, 
it was surreal out of body yeah okay you know some part of me was sitting there on stage and some part of me was floating on cloud nine um (laughs) but it was just so incredible and to be a part of that that moment with her was Mm -hmm. just really really cool and I love all the folks at CMT too. Leslie Fram is amazing, and so it's very cool to be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Trish is just incredible. I actually, <laughs> I'll tell on myself, but I found a book. There's a book called "Get Hot or Get Out," and it was written by a journalist who followed Trisha through kind of the second album mm-hmm. making. Uh, and I found it the other day. I read it like four times the year I moved to Nashville, and there's like notes in the corner and. I'm, you know, underlining everything and, and highlighting it. Yeah. And that was the record with uh, Wrong Side of Memphis, Walk uh-huh. Away Joe, right? Yeah. The follow-up to the debut. Yep. yep. Uh-huh. yep. So, I mean, it's pretty wild to go from being a, a fan of the music mm-hmm. and then getting to know the person and getting to write with them. I mean, writing is such a cool experience. Uh, you take a blank piece of paper and you make something up. And then we play it on the radio. And then you play it. I mean, let's do it. More Coffee, Country, and Cody is on WSM. And we're hanging out with our friend, Erin Enderlin. She's in studio before she heads to the Grand Ole Opry tonight for Opry Country Classics, hosted by Bill Cody and Larry Wayne Gatlin. They're all going to be there. You are I've Look at you like, throwing <laughs> in the middle names like Cody. Well, I've been around like, for two and a half years. It's rather I know, off. I know everybody's middle name because of Everybody's yes. middle. What yeah. is your middle name, Erin? Erin. What's oh. your first name? Emily. Oh. Emily Erin Enderlin, your yeah. E-E-E? All the E's. E. Oh, oh that's kind of great. Yeah, we did a unit on Ireland in second grade, and my teacher told me that Aaron meant Ireland, and I was like, oh, well, I have to go by that then, because Ireland's the coolest. Oh. And I did actually yes. finally get to go there just a couple of weeks ago, and it was magical. Was it really? Mm-hmm. Is that where most of your family lineage comes from? Have you um, done the like the 23andMe thing? Like England, Germany, yeah. and then Ireland. Uh, there are some Courtney's. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in my family line and uh actually my aunt had gone over look and was looking for gravestones you know trying yeah. to find some of the family there and someone was like oh you won't find them here they were they were gypsies oh <gasps> which explains so much that really does <laughs> you're like what do you mean i take my little guitar everywhere <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they were apparently so entertainers we'll see it runs in the blood. Well, yeah. You didn't even stand a chance. Were you playing over there? Or just it was a vacation? Um, yeah. I went with a group of songwriters. Uh-huh. It's kind of like an inspirational mm-hmm. trip. Also text write-off. And it was, yeah. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I see what you're doing. That's brilliant. Do you try and see some of where you are, though, when you're on the road? Because it's easy to just get from I place do. to place and see uh, nothing. I, you, you know, know? I, I used, it depends, obviously, sometimes you can't. But mm-hmm. I've really tried to do that, especially in the last couple of years. Uh, one of my favorite is when I'm up by Springfield going to the little community where Abraham Lincoln's house is. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like, they've got like four square blocks that are from back then mm-hmm. kept just like they were. And it's like going back in time. Oh, so it's not just his house. It's everything no. surrounding yeah. his. Oh, that's really and cool. And a bunch of the other houses have little museums in them. You can go in and read about the people that lived there. Uh-huh. And it's just really cool. That yeah. is cool. That's very cool. Little so door. where do you get inspiration? Like, where does it usually strike you? Um, well, if you're sitting in a coffee shop next to me, beware. Everything is fair game. That's right. Um, <laughs> so I like to eavesdrop. Uh, reading, movies, TV shows, mm-hmm. um, all kinds of things. It just hits. Yeah. Do you are you one of those that you write it in your phone? Do you have a little black book? Like where where do the little like when you hear mm-hmm. a spark, you're like, oh, I gotta write that down. So the phone has helped me or be more organized. I have notes okay. with ideas and mm-hmm. the little audio ideas too. Mm-hmm. If you get, uh, I used to be really bad about writing all kinds of ideas on receipts, and they would be all over. And then there's just like receipts tucked in every corner because they've got all my ideas that I would go through. <laughs> so I've kind of upgraded from that. Yeah. <laughs> But that would be a really cool art installation at some point if you had all the receipts. I probably still have them somewhere. Oh, big (laughs) time! Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I kind of save all that goofy kind of stuff. So yeah, Uh, yeah. But you know, it's interesting too. I remember one of the best pieces of advice I ever got when I started doing interviews in college. You know, do for like sports stuff, and said, just don't forget to listen. 
you know, because you, uh, all, you have all these questions you want to ask, and sometimes you're not even listening sure. to what they're saying, and it's such a vital part of songwriting because you never know where that magic is going to mm-hmm. come from, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and especially with co-writing, I mean, yeah. a lot of times you'll sit down and you'll just kind of start... We actually, we know Bobby Tomberlin, oh, yeah, sure. a good friend He's of mine. Good. I yeah. love him. I was writing with Tess Frizzell last week, and uh, she was telling a story about Bobby. He was coming out to the Opry, and she said something about, well, you, sometimes you just have to lay it down. And I was like, well, there's the song idea right there. <laughs> yeah. We're just going to yeah. we're gonna write yeah. that uh-huh. today. Oh, um, so, so you never know. And, yeah, a lot of times, you know, especially if you've been writing a whole lot, you right. might just want to sit with a co-writer, and that's one of the coolest things about co-writing is that you can kind of just spark each other's yeah. imagination with something and telling stories. Mm. Aaron Enderlin mm-hmm. in studio with us this morning. That was beautiful. Thank oh, I can you. hear oh. Willie sing that. I was just thinking how poignant to have a guy who's almost 91 sing those lines. Mm. I mean, it's just... And when Trigger comes in, yeah, oh, I almost fell off my chair. Yeah, so you've heard. Oh, it. you've heard it. I did get to. Oh, it. I got a little preview. Oh, uh, oh. It's so good. Well, you know what? All the best to you, man. Thank You're you. on cloud nine right now. I know the Trisha Yearwood cut, and now this coming out. I'm just a kid in a country music candy store. Yes, you are. And I don't know what kind of golden ticket you got, but I'm happy you got it, girl. That's awesome. Erin Enderlin, she's going to be there tonight. It's Opry Country Classics. A full rundown. Host Larry Gatlin, Larry. Wayne, he's going to be there. Spotlight artist is Sawyer Brown. They'll be dancing all over the place. Aaron's there, of course. The Malpas Brothers, Charlie McCoy, and the Gatlin boys are all there. So Bill Cody will be there as well. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much. Thanks for getting up early. And of course, that new album from Willie is coming out May 31st, The Border. You can listen to her song from Trisha that's out right now as well. Put it in a song. So all good things from our guest, Aaron Enderlin, this morning. Stay with us. We've got more on Coffee Country and Cody. Well, let's talk about the ACMs. They're coming up quick. First, we've got Stagecoach. Then we've got the ACMs. Mm-hmm. But before all of that, Connor, well, Connor Smith is getting married this weekend. So he's got a lot of milestones that are happening for him. He said, you know what? Honestly, it's kind of sinking in right now. I'm just very grateful for this new ACM nomination. This is the first time he's ever been nominated. He is in the new male artist category alongside Ernest, Cameron Marlowe, Dylan Scott, and Nate Smith. New male artist of the year. 59th annual ACM Awards is going to be happening on May 16th. It's going to be live from Frisco, Texas, and you can watch it on Amazon Prime Video. I'll be down in the mix. So I'll, I'll send all of the clips and wonderful things back your way. Well, let's talk about our friend Ashley McBride with The Devil I Know. Y'all, if you haven't heard this song, it's off the latest album, which is also titled The Devil I Know. It's such an amazing song, but she said it really came from some life lessons. Basically, she's saying everyone is telling you what to do and you're getting unsolicited advice everywhere, but it always turns out better when you follow your gut. And that's the devil you know. Mm -hmm. So if you listen to the whole song, then you get (laughs) all of the unsolicited advice that she was given. Get your butt to church. Get your butt to work. Mm -hmm. It's a great hook. It's a catchy, catchy song. Great hook. We love Ashley. She's amazing. She's also out on tour, so you can catch her all around the U.S. Just go to her website for all the information. Well, this was the one thing that caught my attention yesterday, and I had to bring it in. Um, This weekend, Chris Stapleton is going to be on Saturday Night Live. He will be there as the musical guest, of course, and hosting this weekend will be Ryan Gosling. Which, if you watch the Barbie movie, you know, he had a big moment with I'm Just Ken. Uh, I think he actually, he won a Grammy for that song, I believe. And while he's doing I'm Just Ken at one part, he does have a cowboy hat on. (laughs) Apparently, those country roots are running real deep with him. Here's a snippet of what SNL posted. (sighs) Mr. Stapleton, big fan. Love your music. Nah, stupid. Yo, Chris. One for the grand? Master Stapleton, tis I, Sir Gosling. That's cool. Hey, Chris. Should he put it on? Oh, yeah, he should. And he does his best (laughs) tilt of the brim. 
How fun is that? That is very That well is done. a huge spotlight yeah. for Chris Stapleton, by the way. I think third time that he's been on SNL. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how many times that Ryan's hosted, but this is going to be a fun one. There are certain weeks I get excited about, and other mm-hmm. weeks I'm like, ah, I don't know either one of those people. But this week, yeah, two of my faves. I have to admit, there have been a few people in my life where I have practiced what I was going to say to them and worked out different versions of it, and then worked out different versions of their response and what I would say to their different responses. So you're dialoguing like in your almost, head. almost scripted the whole thing and it never got because I always blow my opening line (laughs) okay so who was it who were you nervous to meet the most nervous I've ever been was meeting Mary Chapin Carpenter for the first time because I was just such a huge fan yeah so that was that that was the one that and um yeah and I just said something so stupid it was like well it was okay at the beginning and then we were deciding what song we were going to play and she said oh I'd like to do this one and I actually said something like oh that's one of the peppy ones (laughs) That's one of the peppy ones. Okay, so... It was awful. I, too, have been very, very Mm -hmm. nervous to meet a few people in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, Probably early on. Not, well, maybe still a little. Mm -hmm. but Not so much anymore, but I was very nervous to talk to Keith Urban. Because, again, I'm such a Keith Mm -hmm. fan. Mm -hmm. And I think my question to him was, does it ever get old? And he looked at me like, no are you kidding Uh this is amazing and then i was like gosh what an idiot why did i ask that question i feel like every time (laughs) i do feel like every time i interview keith i do ask him a question that i'm like Mm -hmm. why did i say that Mm -hmm. why did it come out of my mouth that way right you know Mm -hmm. most of the time it's i'm fine but with keith i'm always in my head like oh that sounded so dumb you're Mm -hmm. (laughs) that was not brilliant How how about your first time with dolly First time with Dolly, I was nervous. I was pregnant with Reese. So that can tell you how long ago this was. I was very nervous. It was promotional for um, Cracker Barrel. She was doing a line of rocking chairs Mm -hmm. that were pink, that were Dolly Parton limited edition. And I volunteered to go last. So I was very nervous. My hands were real sweaty. And and I walked up to her and she put her hands on my stomach and Mm -hmm. said, you're going to have a baby. And I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, is it a boy? or a girl and I said a little girl and she said well then I'm going to give you this chair so she signed the pink rocking chair to Savannah Reese love Aunt Dolly it is in my house currently so my first meeting with Dolly could not have gone better that's, I mean now that's I, raising the bar I will on meeting say people. Uh, when they put the chair in my SUV and I was driving home I called my husband and I was bawling mm-hmm. and he thought something was wrong and I'm like Dolly Bart gave me a rocking chair. <laughs> of course, I was a little emotional, too, because yeah. I was eight right. and a half months pregnant. Yeah. But yes, and no one sits in that rocking chair to this day. It's in oh. the spare bedroom. Okay. No, you're not allowed to sit in the dolly rocker. Absolutely not. So, all right, guys, we've got a lot more show right here for you. Hang out with us on Coffee Country and Cody. Oh, it's going to be a fun morning. We're glad you're along for the ride. Now available, new episodes of My Opry Debut. He's making his grand old Opry debut. Will you welcome Devin Gilfillian? I've always wanted to speak against injustices that were happening, and I made it my mission to spread joy and love and have difficult conversations with each other and, and sometimes also make them dance and forget about everything that's happening. Oh, I told you, you picked a really good night to come to the Opry. The Opry debut, Devin Gilfillian, everybody. We are such fans. Charlie and I just talking about Devin Gilfillian, how cool he is. He just has such a sweet, wonderful vibe and joy about him. And if you want to watch his Opry debut, you can do so on our YouTube channel. We've got all of the Opry debuts up there, including uh, not only Devin, but so many more that are right available at your fingertips whenever you want to watch. Just go to YouTube and go to the Opry channel. Look for my Opry debut. It's right there. You can watch it all. I think as much as we enjoy going back and watching them, I think the artists love it because so much of what happens, it's a blur. So it's like, this is like a nice little mini documentary of my day that I don't remember a whole lot of. So thank you for, it's like your wedding day. You go back and watch the video to find out what happened, you know? Oh, that is such a. Oh, touchy subject. Sorry. Oh, I had no idea. What what is this story? This is a good story. (laughs) Circle around kids. It's story time. Uh Um, when I got married, I was working for a television station in Indiana Mm -hmm. and, um, I hired our chief photographer, videographer to come and video for me. 
And I don't remember all of the details, but I think one of the microphones, the batteries died at some point. Mm. It was kind of one of those, like, really? Mm. Is this all happening? It is. Um, I have the video. It is on a D... It's a, not a DVD. It is on um, a smaller cassette that we used to shoot on. That sure. was like the first digitized cassettes because uh-huh. you know it went from like big vhs cameras to uh, like a mini uh, but they were DVC. thick right yeah. like about like that no no no, no. this one's no. skinny oh, okay. it's a dvc pro that's the name of it mini okay. dvc pro so i have it on that um and it's never been edited and i've never seen it so i have really? the raw but i've well at least part of it i uh-huh. know is on there and so i've actually if he's watching, I handed it to Joel Wilson. So Joel Wilson has it because he's the only person I know that has one of the players that will play oh, it. Can transfer. So right, right. yeah, we're we're working toward possibly actually Eventually finally seeing the wedding. Just to let everybody know, my 25th anniversary is coming up, and we've never seen it. Well, that would be a really great it really wedding would be. present. Though, I know. I need to, I need to call yeah. Joel and see if yeah. he's working yeah. on it. And we also need to stop like... talking about it on the radio, so uh, it's a surprise. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, maybe. Or it yeah. might be a surprise that it's not even uh, there at all and then it's uh, completely gone. But yeah, uh, it was one of those, like, wow. the best intentions just never came to fruition. My friend Vicki Russell shot ours, and we didn't uh, we didn't pay anybody to do it. She just happened yeah. to bring a camera and just shot all this amazing footage, Aww. and the battery died on her camera just before I was getting ready to sing Burn in Love. So there's no, there's no, uh, Nobody doc, do, has no, that? no documentary of me doing Burn in Love. No. Come on. No, I'm serious. Really? Yeah. No, yeah. no phones or anything? No, no. Dang. Yeah. Well, you just think, cell phones weren't, I mean, they were, but they weren't like, what year was you, this? you know, 2000. Oh, I should know this. Uh, oh, uh, wait, wait, 2005. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. next year's yeah, 20. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is 19 this okay. year. Okay, all so. right, I got it. <laughs> all right, well, let's talk about, <laughs> let's get out of this quickly yeah. because you forgot yours yes. and I'm giving away secrets. Yes. So let's talk about Terry Clark coming to the Rhyme. And this is going to be an amazing show. If you Mm -hmm. haven't heard, Terry is actually um, putting out her greatest hits. It's going to be on vinyl as Mm -hmm. well if you want to get greatest hits on vinyl. But she's doing her first ever headlining show at the Ryman. Wow. Okay. I would have thought she would have done that before. Me too. I thought this would have happened before now, but it's actually going down Thursday, August 29th. And uh, it's going to be in, in... coordination with her May 31st arrival of her greatest hits album. So tickets for the Ryman go on sale this coming Friday, tomorrow on AXS.com. You can wait and you can also get a signed copy of Terry's greatest hits LP. It's available at UMG's Nashville store. So you can just go on UMG.com, find out more information there. But yeah, if you want to be there, first ever headlining show, August 29th. Congrats to Terry. We need to make sure she comes to see us before Mm -hmm. that show. That would be really special. First time I ever saw her live was at an Opry Country Classics at the Ryman. Was it really? Yeah, she's fantastic. Yeah. So good. Mm-hmm. Well, I knew she'd played the stage, but first time mm-hmm. that it's her yeah, name. But that's cool. Yeah, good very cool. Dolly Parton has a new book that's coming out. You know, she's got a multiple line of all the things from cookware to <laughs> a new album. Do? I know, it's crazy. Yeah. I just, I, if there's one person that has her fingers in everything, it would be Dolly Parton, including. Children's books, a new one coming out from Penguin Young Readers. They are publishing Dolly Parton's Billy the Kid Comes Home for Christmas. It's coming out on October the 1st. So the picture book is a standalone sequel to the 2023 Dolly Parton's Billy the Kid Makes It Big. Billy the Kid, in case you were wondering, is like this sweet little, I think he's a boxer. I can't tell. I thought he was a pug earlier, but he's not a pug. No, he's like uh, almost looks like a uh, one of the French, like a French, French bulldog. bulldog. He yeah. might be a French like bulldog. A Frenchie. Yeah. yeah, he's so so cute. Well, this is her god dog. It's actually her niece's dog, and his name is Billy. So she started writing these books with him as the main character, mm-hmm. and she said, hey, "Of course, my my god dog Billy. He's a big star now, so he deserves his own holiday special." So there you go, Billy the Parton, Billy. The Kid Comes Home for Christmas is available for pre-order right now. You can get it for your kids in time for Christmas. If you're wondering where Bill Cody is today, he's at Mild Stomping Grounds today in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Today in Nashville is a fun entertainment show that happens here on uh, (laughs) WSMV locally in Nashville. It's the NBC affiliate. And uh, they are celebrating 30 years Mm -hmm. 
of Bill Cody being on the air here on WSM. So they've invited him over and he's doing an interview with my former co-host, Carol Sullivan. Shout out, Carol. I love you. Mm -hmm. I talked to her yesterday. So we were talking about this this morning and Bill was texting me and I said, well, have fun at my old stopping grounds. Mm -hmm. You can watch it later today if you want to watch the whole thing. It's going to be on WSMV. You can see it streaming live, but then they also will be airing it here locally on the NBC affiliate at 2.30. Very cool. Yeah. It, it's, you know, even in the the early days of radio where people stayed a long time at one place, 30 years was like very rare. But they, nowadays I mean, it's just on. unheard it's unheard of. unheard of. Yeah. So For it's sure. quite a legacy. It's quite a legacy. Coming up couple weeks, like mm -hmm. two weeks, and we'll be mm -hmm. celebrating it to the day. Mm -hmm. Well, Connor Smith is celebrating because he has his first ACM Award nomination. Congratulations to him. He was nominated in the Best New Male Artist category. Here's what he had to say. The other names on the list of artists are guys that I just love as a fan and respect, um, songwriters and as humans too, and so... Uh, really grateful, and, and uh, it's cool to be in the conversation. But once again, thanks to everybody who voted for us. Once again, it's kind of sinking in. It's a big week. I'm getting married in, in a few days. Uh, and so to throw a little ACM nomination um, in this exciting week is, is, is pretty cool. So thank you, guys. Uh, we love you all, and I will see you all soon. Congratulations. Connor Smith having the best week ever, as he mentioned, getting married this weekend. So getting married and his first ACM nomination. And we have breaking news. This just came across that, mm -hmm. well, it looks like O.J. Simpson has passed away at the age of 76. He was battling cancer, mm -hmm. um, probably in Florida still because that's where he had made his home for years. But they're, they've actually put out a statement now from the family on April 10th, our father. Father Orenthal James Simpson succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. And that came out this morning. So he actually passed away yesterday, 76. Yeah. Uh, the People versus O.J. Simpson, one of the most riveting uh, miniseries I think I've ever seen. It was really incredible. I yeah. remember watching it live. Oh, the live trial. Yeah. Judge Ito. It and it was, down. oh, it was, yeah. yeah. I was doing a talk show at the time. Uh, Were you? And you could imagine it being a big, a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was. I mean, American Dream to American Nightmare. It was just the yeah. the, the the craziest thing. I so. was still. I was not working yet. I was still in school, but I remember watching that, um, and especially the day the verdict came down, we were all together watching it. So, uh, O.J. Simpson passed away, age of seventy-six. Stay with us, everybody. We've got more right here on Coffee Country and Cody. We'll see you on May fourth. Big thank you again to Erin Enderlin, who stopped by today. Uh, she's going to be there tonight. I'll run that lineup for you in a minute. And also Gary Levy from the Ryman. So if you want to go see that new Elvis exhibit, it's at the Ryman. It opens today. And tonight, it's Country Classics with your host, Larry Wayne Gatlin. He'll be there. Spotlight artist is Sawyer Brown. Erin Enderlin is playing. The Malpas brothers are going to be there. Charlie McCoy. And, of course, the Gatlin Brothers. You can listen in live on WSN. The Big Red Curtain goes up at 7. And tomorrow, I won't be here. You'll still be here. Mm -hmm. Aaron's gone. We're all taking off yeah. a little early for the weekend. Me and Annie going to hold down the fort. Oh. Right. Yeah. Chick flick tomorrow, too. Yes. Make sure you tune in for that. Have a great one, everybody. See ya. Go!